And the quote was, yeet, yeet. I keep saying yeet <laughs> in my brain is like a meme because I'm like, hot yeet. But then like I have to train myself before I go to class not to say yeet so that I'm not like, you know, in my Irish literature class with my Irish literature professor being like, yeah, and then yeet. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cry. Homestuck, the internet's Ulysses. Or Hachu for short. This is the podcast where we compare Homestuck and Ulysses bit by manageable bit. I'm your co-host Jamie, resident applied rhetoric major. And I'm your co-host Kira, resident travel boy, because I'm in Florida today. And you can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and Patreon and K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram. And you can find me at jamietamar.wordpress.com and on Instagram as jamietamar. That's J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R. Um, disclaimer about this episode, I'm in a really creaky chair. It's my grandmother's chair and it's very creaky. So if you hear a lot of chair creaking noises, that's me. I am a big idiot and I was like, I'm in the sound room where you're literally, there's a sign on the wall next to me saying, hey, don't eat, don't even think about food. And I have an apple in my bag that I snagged from the dining hall this morning to eat later. And I came in and I was like, I'm kind of hungry. I should eat my apple while we record. And then I was like, (laughs) no, it's fine. Just bless our podcast with some ASMR apple crunching noises. Apple crunching ASMR and also some weird like nose wrinkling sounds i don't know i the apple has been banged around in my bag all day so i'm probably not going to enjoy it but that is irrelevant we've decided to do our questions differently where kira asks one and then i ask one so that you don't get an overdose of homestuck or ulysses all at once and then we can put the discussions together so that it's more comparative so do you want to do your first question do you want me to um i'd love to do my first question yeah yeah go for it So uh, I tried to make them easier because I feel like I was mean (laughs) last time and I was mean and I did very mean and hard questions. So and I also I hope you didn't do another two pointer because last time you did a two pointer. I didn't do a two pointer. So this time I did a two pointer hoping that you would not do a two pointer. I have something labeled as bonus, but it's not like two points. It's just like for fun to see if you remember. Okay. well, I have a two pointer. My my 2.1, and you get two points if you remember both, is what is Rose's striped specibus, or her kind abstrata, as it is called in the lingo, and also what is Dave's kind abstrata, and you gotta get the actual name of it, not Needle just the weapon. kind and blade kind? Yeah, there you go. I just already knew Rose's, like that's just ingrained in my memory, and I specifically remember reading the Dave one. That's good. I thought I might trip you up, because a lot of people will remember that Dave uses swords, but they'll be like, what is it? Sword sword kind, katana kind, but yeah, that's good. Great. Okay. Where does the opening scene of this episode take place? Okay. Before you answer that disclaimer, I read this episode kind of half asleep and shoved into a corner of the linguistics department because I had to charge my computer and I was listening to the audiobook as I read it. And then after, as soon as I finished reading it, I read like a, the Ulysses guide thing. So... I'm not a super genius who I just understood this on the first try. I also read a companion. Would you like me to repeat the question? Well, the, oh, no, I got it. The question is, where is it? It's in the school? Yes, it is. That was the point. But do you, can you tell me what kind of school? A little kid school. Oh, 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 a military school. Yes, it's Navy school. Yes, I remember that now. Nice. Okay, your turn. Oh boy. Okay. Um, what is the name that you try to input for Dave that he slashes apart? Inseparable prick. There you go. I don't know if I would have gotten that if I hadn't just read it. Okay. What subject does Cyril Sargent ask Stephen's help with after class? Math. Yes. Math slash algebra. Mm, algebra. What celebrity are Dave's glasses from? Um. Oh my gosh. No, no. I can't believe this. I can't either. Well, I can. I mean, I don't remember. But I don't think they ever, like, 
it. They totally said it. I'm sure they said it, but it was just kind of like mentioned. It wasn't like, like I can remember the panel on which they talk about it, but I don't remember like, was it Ben Stiller? Yep. Okay. I'll give you that. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, I said it before you did. So that you did. Help. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> okay. What is Mr. DC trying to get Steven to do with his money? Oh, put it in a weird little boxy thing. Sure. Yeah, I my answer was save it, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, put it in a weird little box because he thinks he doesn't he doesn't save. Um, here's another, here's one that'll really throw you for a loop that I also asked last time as, as my hard one. Uh, what is Dave's browser? Hephaestus? Yes! Did you pay attention? Yes, I did, because I came and I was like, okay, but my thought process was, he's definitely not going to ask about this, because he asked about it last time, but just in case, and then I, like, encoded it deliberately. (laughs) I'm proud of you for predicting me. No, I unpredicted you. I was like, he definitely won't ask this, but I guess my subconscious predicted you. Yeah. It was good. On whom does Mr. DC blame his problems with the Irish government? Oh, doesn't he say, like, the Jews? Yep. (laughs) Classic. The the, the Ulysses Guide explanation of this scene is, like, really, really, really good because they're talking about, like... Okay, actually, I'll wait and discuss this because that's in my notes and I want to go off. But, okay, do your last question. I'm ready for you to go off. What is Rose's cat's name? Um, oh, wait, is it, is it Vodka Mutini? Jamie. What? Um, I, it is later, sort of, almost, yeah, but I don't I, think I can give you that. No, yeah, that's not, fuck. Um. <laughs> do you want me to come back to you? Remember how I couldn't remember Buck Mulligan's full name? Yeah, but I'm trying to think, like, my brain is, like, giving me, <laughs> my brain was, like, void cat, but I think that's a portmanteau of void fish and god cat. I think you're right. <laughs> like, that's not a thing. <laughs> void cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is my uh, homestuck first guardian OC, uh, void cat. Void cat, it's very original. Okay, yeah, come back to me. I don't think I'm going to remember, but I'll do my last question. What does Mr. DC say history is moving towards? Oh, frick. I remember. Oh, no. (laughs) Like a goal, like a big, like a goal. God? Yeah. I'll I'll give you that, but can you give me more? Well, I just remember that he was all like, history is moving or something, and he was being all dumb and insensitive, and then Stephen was all like, history is a nightmare, and I hate it. Yes. Uh, God, 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 like, God. (laughs) The manifestation of God. Okay, I wouldn't have gotten that. Bonus question, not for an extra point, just to see if you remember. What does Stephen describe as God. Oh, he says it's like a scream in the street or something. Yes. Very good. Ooh. I think I was, I feel like I kind of was cheating by listening to the audiobook. Um, every time it was like Stephen's inner thoughts, he read it in like a different, like creepier voice. So you could always tell really, really easily, oh, this is narration or, oh, this is like musings. And I feel like that's cheating because part of the fun of reading Ulysses is like trying to figure out which is which. But like, it was a lot of just, I, I was just like, like when you, I was reading along with it and I was like, oh yeah, like Steven's thinking that in his head. But I was like, I wouldn't have known that if he wasn't reading it in a very creepy voice so that I knew. <laughs> That's a really good creepy voice. Yeah, you, you like did. my creepy voice. I really um, liked it. Can you do the rest of the podcast in that voice? What if you do the rest of the podcast like this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people can understand me very well. <laughs> I'll get I really excited. You. I can't hear you unless you talk the <laughs> Nice try. Um, I can't do it. I'm laughing. <laughs> did we finish the quizzes? Yes. What is the score? Um, you got five out of five again, and I got four out. Of, oh no, I got five out of six. Or is it just five out of five because it was the bonus was a bonus? 
No, you got five five out of six, I think. Five out of six? Okay. Sweet. Remember how in episode zero, I was like, I'm definitely going to be winning. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Do you want to start? Or do you want me to go off about what Ulysses' guide said about Jews? Uh, well, hold on. Let's save that, because I have something that relates... Now I don't remember the way in which I thought it would. Oh, no, yeah, it relates. Um, You were talking about how you feel like it's cheating in the audiobook because you can tell because of the creepy voice when it's just Stephen talking. And that was something I noticed. Uh, it was one of the only things I wrote down um, under similarities because in Homestuck, okay, just going to plug, have you been using the Homestuck companion Chrome plugin that I told you about? No, I have not. Okay, well, it's beautiful. And uh, I'll I'll link it in the description. It's called Homestuck Companion, and it and it puts in all of Hussey's notes from the published Homestuck books underneath the comic pages. So if you have read Homestuck before and you're going through a second time, I would highly recommend it. It is beautiful and wonderful. But if you, if you haven't read Homestuck before, then maybe don't get it because you'll be confused and there's spoilers in it. But it's wonderful and lovely. And Hussey, at some point, um, he was actually talking about the ambiguity in a lot of homestuck about like because it can it can switch perspective almost because like there's this one part where it switched from being second person to being third person about john because then it was talking to the mayor and addressing him wayward vagabond as you and i was like "Hmm, that's cool and then in the notes hussy was like i did that on purpose and i was like whoa he did that on purpose so that to me was like kind of the same thing as in Ulysses when as Steven it's like you don't really know when he's talking or when he's being his in his brain I just had so much deja vu of me saying that sentence probably said it before I feel like I said the exact same sentence before but yeah anyway that's the thing I noticed I will link that extension in the description because it's very lovely nice yeah that is I mean that's pretty legit as far as similarities go yeah I like how they both play around with, like, the perspective and, you know, who, who's writing this? Is it Joyce? Is it Stephen? Is it Hussey? Is it John? Is it you? <laughs> Did you write Homestuck? Yeah, in a fever dream, like we said last time or the time before. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, I have some, a random collection of notes. I have some notes that are not from Ulysses, but are from a reading I did for my Irish Lit class, which is turning out to be a lot more helpful to the podcast than I thought it would be. So I'm glad I'm sticking with it. Do you want me to like start there? Actually, I think I want to start there because it kind of relates more to episode one than to episode two. Yeah, go for it. Blast off. Okay, so this is a quote from a criticism we read called Gender and History in Yeats Love Poetry by Elizabeth Butler Cullingford. And the quote was, Yeats, yeats. I keep saying yeats in my brain as like a meme because I'm like, ha, yeet. But then like I have to train myself before I go to class not to say yeet so that I'm not like, you know, in my Irish literature class with my Irish literature professor being like, yeah, and then yeet. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cry. Episode title is Yeats Love Poetry. <laughs> okay, anyway, so the quote is Yeats' friend, Senator Oliver Gogarty was taken prisoner by the Irish Republican Army. Swimming to safety across the Liffey, he vowed to dedicate a pair of swans to the river should he survive. His much-photographed fulfillment of his promise was a melodramatic and self-promoting gesture. Which, that's just a funny story, and I love history, and the Irish Republican Army was responsible for the enforcement of the Committee on Evil Literature, which... It's just, like it's it's horrible. Like it's a really bad censorship thing that happened in Ireland. But like, why would you name yourself the Committee on Evil Literature and then expect to be taken seriously? It's like, oh, I would love to write me some evil literature. Well, it's evil literature if you talk to creepy voices. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'll do your entire performance in Gender in Ancient Greek audi- Greece audiobook in that um in that voice from now on. Thank you. But um, I bring this quote up because. This Senator Oliver Gogarty, who did this random thing, swimming across a river with the swans, was friends with James Joyce and was the model for Buck Mulligan. I feel like we don't know a ton about Buck Mulligan yet, but just like we meet him, you know, doing the mock shaving, the mock mass with a shaving bowl. 
Um, yeah, he definitely seems like the kind of guy. Sounds like who the would... kind of guy who would dedicate swans to the to a river. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel also... like I was reading some article about maybe it was him or maybe it was it was one of his friends who was like the model for one of the characters, and they read it and they were like offended, but then they weren't offended. I don't know. I'll find I'll find the article and bring it up next episode because that was interesting. Offended by what? The by the character that was modeled after them. Oh. Something yeah, like I'm, that. I don't know who it would be, but maybe. I mean, Steven is kind of a is a self insert as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um Oh, hold on. You can keep talking. I have a thing about self insert later. Okay. Oh yeah, that's that's a that's a good similarity. Mm-hmm. Um, to varying degrees. Also, this is tangential, but I'm pretty sure I read about this in yeah, I definitely read about this in this um gender and history criticism. Apparently, there are a lot of poop jokes in Ulysses, and we first encounter Leopold Bloom on the toilet. All right. And that made, like, a lot of people take it less seriously, and also, like, it was just this, the, we were reading this criticism, by the way, in the context of having read um, Yeats' poem, Lita and the Swan, which is about a very violent rape of a woman by a swan. The swan is, of course, Zeus in disguise, because who else would it be? But either way, it's horrifying. Um, So we were talking about how, like, it's a male writer writing about a rape and, you know, all the implications there. And people were saying, like, part of the irony of it was that you could write a poem about a woman getting raped by a swan, but you can't write a poem about a woman getting raped by a man. And, but you can write a poem about a woman getting raped by a swan, but you can't write a stream of consciousness novel with a lot of poop jokes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and also yates never finished reading ulysses so if we finish then we've beat yates Ooh, we've beat eats we beat eats <laughs> yeats episode eats. title we beat eats you can spell it beat eats but spell them both correctly and it'll be like sean bean where like they're spelled the same but pronounced differently and like beat yates is looks like it should rhyme but doesn't Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's definitely a because I mean I feel like that's something with Homestuck. A lot of people are like, I can't take it seriously because it just looks so dumb. The, all the little characters don't have arms, and and they always talk about dumb jokes. I I think the sprites are adorable. I do too. I people... don't think it's a good aesthetic in terms of like, wow, it's beautiful. I appreciate it for the art style, but like they're like they're just so cute. <laughs> People always tell me that, like, I can't get into Homestuck because of the art style. And I'm like, but they're so little. <laughs> I Yeah, I just, like, I think they're really cute. And I honestly, like, some of the guest art is, like, g- objectively good, but it's still not, like, super aesthetic. It's just like, wow, that's a nice drawing there. Um, So I would never say I would get into Homestuck for the aesthetic. And it definitely, as it goes on, the aesthetic gets weirder and weirder. Yeah, I don't know. No, I definitely, like, didn't ever feel it was... I mean, I don't know about the first time, but this time, like, I think it's cute, and I think, like... Oh, this is a really good segue, like, the color symbolism, which is what I was going to go off about with the Jews thing, but do you have anything you want to say about Homestuck color symbolism? Um, One more thing about just Homestuck as the the characters and stuff. I think that's something where it does really well as a visual media, because something that's great about writing is that you can write a character and people can imagine that character in any number of ways. And with webcomics, it's a little different because you have an actual image of what that character is supposed to look like. But to me, especially as someone who cosplays and draws, something that's really great about Homestuck as a visual media is that all the characters are just sort of like, I don't know, they're almost like shells of, of what the character should be, but we don't have canonical, like, you know, face shapes or like any of that for the Body characters. Types. Body types, yeah. So you colors. Can, Yes, that too. So you can do whatever you want with them. And I think that's delightful about Homestuck. Yes, I agree. I love that. Yeah, I feel like it's a really, really good way of like, like every character is pretty, I don't know how recognizable they would be completely if you had like never read it. But like, it's not like they're hard to keep track of. So they have enough differences in that sense. And also like, honestly, this is Homestuck spoilers for people who haven't read it, but, like, once we get into, like, all the ectobiology stuff and the weird, like, who's related to who, their hair color is kind of, like, a weird, um, not weird, kind of, like, a really overly simplified, like, Punnett Square problem in a middle school biology class. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's just, like, 
white hair is dominant over black hair and you're like okay but no one's ever gonna have like that exact shade but in homestuck it's just white or black and you can interpret that however you want and dave strider is a redhead but um, <laughs> you're not wrong yeah no i think it's just like a really good way of like they don't have body types they don't have skin color and it's like a really good balance between like they're identifiable it's not just like xkcd stick figures but they jade can be filipino jade can be east asian whatever you want rose can have like a buzz cut well not really hair is kind of the one thing we know about them but like rose can have blonde hair rose can have like white hair rose can have a buzz cut I mean, yeah, I'm just talking about, like, things that you could interpret directly from the sprite. Yes, yes, yes. Like, Rose can have a buzz cut, like, whatever you want, but canonically, her hair can be pretty much any color. Yeah, and it's purple. <laughs> and it's purple. You're right. You gotta just become Rose. I mean, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I say Rose has a buzz cut? No, so <laughs> yeah. I'm growing my buzz cut out right now, so we'll see where that goes. No, then you won't be Rose anymore. Rose can have any hair. You're right. Rose can have any hair. The reason the Homestuck characters are so simplistic and you can put the, any features you want onto them is so that we can all just imprint on them and become them. I mean, yeah, and that's a really good writing, like, strategy. I mean, I guess you sacrifice the readership you could have if you had really aesthetic art, but you gain all the readers who are like, yeah, this character is definitely the same, like, body type and race and hair color. Because you don't know, and no one can tell them they're wrong. Oh, this kind of relates to self-inserts. Do you want to talk about self-inserts? Yeah, sure. Go for it. So in the in the Hussy commentary, he literally says that Dave is a self-insert character. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I know he had said that about Dirk, but it was... One of the convers oh, it was it was when they repeated the conversation about the Howie Mandel pissing in the apple juice bottle conversation. And mm-hmm. Hussey said in the commentary, I was the one who said one of the lines in a real conversation that he had about little monsters. And I was like, oh man. Oh, like resealing the was it the one about like resealing the apple juice bottle? Yeah. And then and then either John or Dave, it must have been John in the context of the conversation, was like Dude, he ha- he's like magic, and he's a monster. He has the power to reseal a bottle. Mm-hmm. And then Hussey was like, yeah, I said that. So <laughs> he literally Girl said, witness. he literally says that Dave is a self-insert character. He does later say that about Dirk, and he does imply that there are multiple self-insert characters in Homestuck, which is, uh, I mean, that's relatable as a creator. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, including the one that's literally just, hi, my name's Andrew Hussey, and I'm here to fuck your shit. <laughs> Yes, that one. <laughs> Literally, actually a self-insert. Um, I, I mean, let's keep in mind that let's do some comparative character analysis on Steven Dedalus and Dave Strider. There could be some, not legit in the sense of intentional, but like interesting parallels between Dirk and Steven, i.e. like angsty brooding boys. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so Can right. Can you do like a fun drawing of like, Dirk, but like in the black morning suit with like a speech bubble that's something Steven said. Yes, like, I'm I will prove by algebra that Shakespeare is Hamlet's grandfather. Yes, of course. <laughs> that's something <laughs> Dirk could say. Yeah, exactly. And that bit where he was all like, I'm I'm more of a learner than teacher. Yeah. That's so Dirk. I have a bit, I think it's around that, um, for my quote that I really liked. This episode had a lot of really good quotes in it. And I was like, wow, I love beautiful prose. I had a couple of different quotes and phrases from Homestuck, but none of them are beautiful. They're just kind of a meme. I have one. I have sc- I have one scream, sh- scream, screenshotted. Screenshot. Uh, screenshot. 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 <laughs> I screenshotted it because apparently I thought it was foreshadowing, which I understand why. Um, Also, this is completely unrelated. This is about Homestuck. But I definitely have the same fetch modus as Dave. Oh, absolutely. But instead of, but mine would be instead of being based on like the orthography vowels and consonants, mine would be based on, okay, if you haven't read Homestuck, context is that they have like a specific way, which are pretty much all based on computer programming of taking things like from their inventory like and putting it in their hand and dave's is it like 
it takes the name of the item and it adds up like all the consonants and vowels and then does some weird math with them. I'm oversimplifying, but that's basically what it is. And then well, the that, math is very simple. It just adds them and then it divides by 10 to get a decimal, like a percentage kind of. Yeah. And then that number, it converts to like an integer between one and 10 and it puts the item in that number slot in his, what is it called? Capture log? Yeah. His Silidex. Silidex. Yeah. And if I was in real, in, if I was in Homestuck world, if Homestuck world was real life and I had a fetch modus, mine would be that except instead of orthography vowels, like, oh, this word is like towel. So it's a consonant, a vowel, a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. Mine would be like IPA vowels. So it's like a consonant, a vowel, Probably there would be a different rule for approximants. So then it would be like 2, 1.5.5 or something because W and L are both approximants. Sounds like you. Yeah, right? Isn't that just so cool? I think I would have Dirks, not just because I love Dirk, because, but because it's about categorizing things in ways that they relate and unrelate, which is like my only oh, hobby. Oh, yeah, the grid. Yeah. Yeah, I think you would. Yeah. Do we want to talk about color symbolism? Yeah, go off. Okay, so this is going back to what I have br- tried to bring up like two different times now. Um, one of my questions was, on whom does Mr. DC blame his problems with the Irish government, namely the ignorance of how to cure foot and mouth disease? And he blames it on the Jews. And then the Ulysses Guide bit about that was talking about how um, Mr. DC then says that Jews have sinned against the light. And that sets up not quite color symbolism, I guess, but it's a it's a light dark parallel because Stephen and Leopold, we haven't met yet, both wear black and they're like the heroes of the story. Ooh. Um, yeah, isn't that so cool? And it's like, according to Ulysses' guide, it's a comment on how um, intolerance is not like the, it, that's a way of the narrative of Ulysses frowning upon intolerance and being like okay so these like the, like because leopold is jewish and one of the things mr dc says is he's like haha ireland's not anti-semitic you know why we just don't have any jews and it, then like pretty soon we're gonna meet leopold bloom who's like hi i'm an irish jew you know deal with it yeah um i love that color i didn't even think about that yeah i super didn't either and then i read it and i was like oh wow okay I, I don't know if I actually said this, but if I said, if I, if I verbally questioned whether James Joyce was Jewish, that was completely stupid because I, he's literally trained to be a priest. Like I knew that already in my brain. So. You didn't say that. I don't think. Okay, good. I'm looking, I looked at his Wikipedia page to find this out. I need you to know that his full name is James Augustine Aloncius Joyce. Baby boy. Aloysius. It looks like Aloysius. That's just a huge mood. Baby boy. He and his wife, Nora Barnacle, lived in Trieste, who I represented in my first Model UN conference last semester. Wait, did you really? I did, yeah. I was in the Unrepresented Nations and People's Committee, and I was Trieste. Wow. Yeah, and his his signature was predictably, well, his first name is illegible. His second name, you could convince me that the second blob says Joyce. The first one, I'm like, no, sorry. But the first one, yeah, okay, that says Joyce. Can we talk about that cute little drawing he made? Oh, the the, the one of Leopold Bloom? Yeah, uh, James Joyce was effectively blind. He just couldn't see anything ever. So whenever he tried to draw, it was really funny. It's so cute. I'm, like, obsessed with it. It's just this dorky little drawing. It actually kind of reminds me of Homestuck. How? Just a little, like, hold on. It reminds me of the Monopoly Man. I mean, I don't know if talking about a drawing is a great thing to do in a podcast. It does remind me of the Monopoly Man. We'll link the, we'll link the article. Yeah, we don't need to talk anymore about the drawing, but I'll, I'll link the article with the drawing in the description. Um, that is, oh, this is another thing from (laughs) Ulysses' Guide about, um, this is a quote from Ulysses' Guide about intolerance. It says, Joyce's disgustingly detailed description of DC's, quote, cough ball of laughter leaping from his throat, dragging after it a rattling chain of phlegm, unquote, further emphasizes the novel's revulsion at intolerance in all its forms, which is just a fancy way of saying DC is portrayed as a disgusting character, and that's how the novel criticizes, criticizes intolerance, but that's a way to do it. I love that. Cool. Do you have any more notes? Um, no, that's everything I got. Yeah, that's all from me. Do you want to read our quotes? Yeah, do you have a quote? 
my yeah i have a quote from rose this is uh from the part there, this is a very hard decision because there were a lot of hilarious dave quotes but when with a rose quote and it's from the conversation that she has with dave where they're making fun of him being super famous uh, not but not actually being famous and uh she says deferential flesh and skyward asses i love is her just the dream yeah i just love her she's just so good She's just wonderful, and I love all the big words that she uses. Me too. My quote, which I don't remember the page number of, but it doesn't matter because every edition, every copy of Ulysses has a different page numbering. To learn, one must be humble, but life is the great teacher. Ah, oh, so sexy. This is so pretty. So also, beautiful. Also, okay, I have a quote from Homestuck, too. Ooh. Meanwhile, in the present, in a place where the present may be a concept of dubious merit, John is spacing out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I don't like, okay, I have a very clear memory of being, of going into my Algebra 2 class in ninth grade. And I don't know, I was like, I don't remember what I was saying. I was excited about Homestuck. And then this guy, I don't know if we've given a name yet, but he doesn't need one, was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Homestuck, it's a webcomic. And like, people say it's bad, but it's actually really, really good. And he was like, okay, if you say that, that means it sounds like shit. And you can, Kira knows from the kindness of this person I am describing exactly who I'm talking about. But I remember, like, I think about that all the time. And in my weird, like, blip from, like, 10th grade to now of not interacting with Homestuck pretty much all, that always came back to me. And I was like, I mean, maybe he had a point. Like, maybe it wasn't actually that good. Maybe I was just like, I wanted to like it because my friends liked it. But now that I've read a lot of really bad prose in my life, it's really good. It's so good, y'all. Like, random bullshit aside, I mean, yes, it's ridiculous. Le- yes, it's overly complicated. Yes, the characters, like, Dave is annoying as hell. But, like, the prose is very good. And if you think that it's badly written, whatever that means, you haven't read any badly written prose. I had this moment where I was reading, well, I, I forgot that I installed the Homestuck Companion Chrome extension to have Hussey's, like, narration and stuff and then I scrolled down and I was like what's this extra bit at the bottom and then I was like oh Homestuck Companion but I forgot it was Hussey and I was like oh this is just like some person who's written notes about it but then I read the one sentence and I was like oh it's Hussey (laughs) and then I was just astounded by like how recognizable his stupid like voice is all his like I don't know he it's just very recognizable yeah I know it is I texted Kira about this earlier this week but I was like I want to do a forensic because Kira has this theory I don't know if we've mentioned it yet that the way that the characters talk to each other on Pester Chum actually influenced like how p- real people in real life talk to each other on the internet now because Homestuck like first came out before people talk to each other on the internet all the time and I was like, I want to do, like, forensic linguistics and figure out what it is about Homestuck that makes it like that. Because there's this Tumblr post where it's, like, a weird screenshot from, like, really far, like, you've seen it. Like, the one where it's, like, Trickster Dirk and, like, on a moon or something. And it's, like, someone who hasn't read Homestuck explain what's going on. And then someone who purportedly hasn't read Homestuck explains what's going on. But Kira and I read it together and we were looking at this person's writing style and we were like, no. Either this is Andrew Hussey or they've read Homestuck. Yeah, we were like, there's no way this person uh, trying to do one of those describe what's happening memes on Tumblr has not read the freaking comic because they sound like they've read it. Yeah, exactly. And my first note about forensic linguistics in Homestuck is the absurd personification. Like it's personification, but it's to like, I mean, irreverent, an irreverent kind of level. And I don't have an example screenshotted of it, but it's like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll keep tabs on the forensic linguistics as we go along. Beautiful. Do you want to talk about our websites? Um, Yeah, I'd love to talk about our websites. Uh, You can find us on htiu.podbean.com to uh, follow our podcast and get updates whenever we update the podcast and post a new episode, which is going to be every other Sunday at around noon. But we don't have premium on Podbean yet, so we can't schedule posts. So it'll be around noon. Um, and you can also follow us on htiu.tumblr.com. Uh, we'll post updates there too, as well as cool exclusive content. Like recently, I just posted um, some little drawings that I did of the characters um, in Ulysses. And 
Is that all our websites? You can find our reading schedule on our Tumblr. It's in a little page linked on the sidebar if you want to follow along with us. Uh, This episode covered readings from the second episode of Ulysses and the first half of Act 2 of Homestuck. We split Act 2 into two parts because it's pretty long, not in comparison to the rest of the Acts of Homestuck, but we had to break it up. And is there anything else we need to plug? Well, if you would like to support us financially, give your, we don't have a specific Patreon for it, but just give your money to Kira's Patreon that he mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. Our reading for next week is going to be episode three of Ulysses and the end of act two of Homestuck. So that's from page 442 until 758. Yes, that's correct. Also, thanks to me, uh, I didn't mention this in the previous episode because it had already been recorded when I pasted in the music in post-production, but I made a little intro song for the podcast and it is um, the Showtime Haunting Piano Refrain from Act One of Homestuck that I played onto the little keyboard piano in Garage Band and then stuck some drums behind. So the original song is from Homestuck, played on the piano by me, put into Garage Band with drums and other things, also by me. Great. Thanks for listening. See you next time on Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses. Achoo! Achoo! <laughs> can we do that at the end of every episode we just like fake sneeze <laughs> yeah actually that's really cute can we do that <laughs>